Hey there, YouTube land. Big Dave here. It's Sunday morning. I'm having my coffee. I think this is Green Mountain Dark Roast or something. I'm still waiting for my coffee sponsor. Um, it might be waiting a long time. So in the meantime, I, I still buy coffee, right? Okay, now listen. So uh, I've been reading through some comments and um, I try to answer back the best I can. And now the winter's gonna come in, so I'm gonna try to do some more uh, service videos and, and look at some reels and take some stuff apart and clean, whatever. But, um, uh, so I was reading some viewer comments. Ja Man says he wants to uh, hear something about the 33 Max. And I must have mentioned before that I have some of them or use them. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna look at the Zepco 33 Max. It's an interesting reel. I've had it for a couple years now. Um, two of them I use quite a bit. One of them hasn't even been out of the house yet. So let's look and see what's going on. All right, so first of all, this is a little tricky because, um, so this is the one, this is on the camel rod. I think this is six and a half foot. I really don't know. I'm looking right now to see, yeah, six foot, six inches. So that's six and a half foot, right? Okay. Anyway, um, so this is the 33 Max. And according to the uh, tag on the other one, it says it has 20 pound line. Okay. I think one of them might have 15 pound line, depending on the model. I don't know. So as the drag, the customary wheel works good because it it's nice and adjustable like i keep it moderately tight medium tight um and it also has the switch on the side so if you're bait fishing you can um put the alert switch on and then it'll just pull out and i don't know if you can see but as i'm doing this there's dirt coming out because this is uh i've used this quite a bit and it has not been cleaned yet for uh, the winter. So uh, the only thing about this line, and you're looking at it right now. I'm not a big fan of this line. It's okay if you're going to throw out bait. Because this is what it does. Um, it turns into this spirally stuff, you know. That's what mono does anyway. All right, so um, let's take the cap off. Let me, I got to move these two rods here. Just give me a second because I realized that they're in the way. And now I'm poking myself into them. Okay, they're gone because I have to lay this out. <clears throat> so the deal here is this cap, you can turn it. It comes off of like a bayonet mount. This is going to be all full of some kind of dirt, I'm sure. It doesn't even want to come off. Oh, yeah, it's bad news. <laughs> This is amusing here, right? Wow, look at that thing. Did you ever see anything like that? You know you know what this is? This is uh this is genuine genuine certified dried pond slime. That's what it is. Genuine certified. 100% pond slime. This is getting more fun by the minute. And let's see what's inside. So, is that a dead bug? What is that? Anyway, so look, the proof is I really do use these. Um, and then the, the uh, spool in the front. Let's just see what's going on here. So that's what it looks like. It's got two pickups. They're ceramic pickups, right? They work well. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to take this cap off right now. I have to do this elsewhere because I'm sure this has all kinds of stuff in it. Um, and it needs to be cleaned. Uh, and I, the last I was using this, I'll just show you. I was using it on a popper. There's the popper. I was throwing this big popper around. And uh, I, I know for a fact I caught a couple of bass on this. You know, while I was doing this. So I just tied it right on. Uh, there's no clip. It's direct tied on. 
And like I said, I know I caught a few bass with this. It doesn't cast super far um, because this line is kind of thick and spirally. But if you're working in a certain area, like where I go, there's a lot of weeds and they're tall. So I'm better off using a reel like this than one that has a bale that's spinning around like a spinning wheel. That's actually why I use these because uh, quite a, a couple of the places I go a lot have big tall weeds and I have to maneuver around those weeds. And I can just stick this in between the weeds, push the button, and throw the bait out. And it works fine. Um, so the back of this, you can see it's all worn off. I've used this, this particular one quite a bit, right? Now, I'm going to pop the back cover. And um, let me just get my screwdriver here. So today we're using this. If I ever get one of those uh, Amazon links, you know, sponsor links, whatever they call those things, those Amazon accounts, I was thinking about doing that, you know, to stream a little bit of income, but it's not much. It's just like a little thing. I know a couple people that do it and they tell me it kind of works. So if I ever do that, I'll put the links in the bottom for some of these tools that I use and stuff. I like this screwdriver, it's pretty good, but that's not the point of the video. So let's take this cap off. Um, I'm just gonna go underneath. I gotta be able to see it. Now, what you do is on these, you just go right in the back of this, underneath, and it pops right off. That's it, okay? So let's take a look in here. You can see that's uh, just, I never, I, I, I mean, I've had this apart, put a little oil of grease in it. I can't quite get it to focus. Let's try again. There, that's better. So it has the typical stuff. Um, it's just the regular metal gears. This one doesn't seem to have I don't know if the main gear in the middle is brass or not. I'm going to look at it better. No, it's just press. It's just um, press metal. And the, this cap, these, these, uh, these come off. By the way, I'll put it back later. I'm not going to deal with that now. But that's what you have. And then there's the bushings. Um, there's a bearing in here. I, don't, I think it's just. I think this one just has one bearing. Uh, the the other ones, I think have more bearings. I'm gonna look on this cap, and see if it says. It doesn't say. Now they do put the drain in the bottom. There's that little hole. And uh, it lets water out if you get a lot of water. Now look at the mess that's in here, right? So this is, it's got pretty good pretty good mess inside. All right, let me switch to the other one. I don't want to make this video too long either. Okay, so here's the other one I use all the time. And I don't know if they make this one anymore. This has three bearings in it. Uh, it has a bearing in the front shaft and a bearing... I guess on each side of these, of the handle. This is a 33 max salt water. And like I said, I'm not sure if they make this anymore, but it's basically the same kind of deal um, as that one. And I think as far as I know, the I'm not gonna pop this cap off right now. Um, I think the gears are the same exact as the other one. Um, you could check online, but anyway, let's look at this other one I have here. Here's one I've had for a while, never been opened, never been used, has the tag on it. So here it says 20 pound line, right? And well, it doesn't have any information about the gears. 
It just says there's three bearings and a 2.6 to 1 ratio to real. But guess what? This one has no uh, bait switch. Okay? It only just has one position. So if you're going to bait fish, you got to kind of leave the button open for the line to go out. Because if you catch, if, especially if you get a carp on there or something, it's going to just pull the whole rod. So you got to open it. There's no way to adjust the uh, other thing. You know, the uh, there's no way to set the the bait uh, finder um, drag, which is different than the regular drag. And I already know what's in there from looking at it. It's hard to see on this video, but there's a little plastic piece that rides against the gear. And that's how you get that clicker when it's uh, in the bait position. Um, and you know what? It's plastic. And I have to say, it's worked, and I haven't had any trouble with it. And I've used it quite a bit. So I'm not going to complain and say, oh, yeah, it's a piece of plastic. It's some kind of cheap thing or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to say that because I've used the reel a lot, both of them. And I've had a couple of good sizes of uh, carp on the, and, and some of these big minnow things we have around where I am. They, they look like a carp. They have no barbels, and they're big. They're maybe eight pounds, six pounds. Um, they could even be bigger. You know, some of them, they look like a giant football. I don't know what they are. They're not carp. They look like a, like a giant minnow thing. That's what somebody told me that they're just a giant minnow. You know, um, they're gray. They look kind of like a carp that has no uh, barbels and their mouth is more in the front than underneath. So it's like a crossbreed kind of thing, whatever it is. I don't know. But they're heavy and you catch them on corn or you might catch them on a worm. But I've had a few of them on that rod. Um, and this is the setup I use. I use a slip weight uh, on top of a, you know, a BB shot. And then... Uh, And then I tie on to uh, a fluorocarbon, a small fluorocarbon. I don't even need much of it. This is the fluorocarbon leader. And I use, this is about a number six hook. And I'll put a big worm on it or uh, some corn, you know, and maybe uh, catch a carp or whatever. Around here, the big thing is, and I'm like in New Jersey, where I am in more northern central New Jersey, uh, the carp, you have to kind of make sure the line is laying flat in the water. And the water's not that deep around here in some of the places we fish for carp. I mean, there are some places that they're in the big river, so it's 20 feet. But I'm just talking about most of the places, it's two feet. So, and then one thing is the line has to lay flat. Because if they go on top of the line, same thing with a catfish, uh, where, where we are here, but the catfish are not that big. Um... If they sense the line or something, they just go away. So you got to lay the, the line has to kind of lay flat. So they have a swimming area if they want to pick up the bait. All right. So anyway, as always, thank you for watching. Um, you were live when we took out the giant piece of uh, pond matter. Right? Okay. So we're on to more coffee. It's Sunday. Have a good day. Um, if you like these kind of videos and, uh, you know, this kind of kitchen table talk stuff about reels and fishing line and screwdrivers, coffee, and always have a brush. You just need a junk brush. You don't need anything good because you got to get in there and take out the stuff sometimes. And uh, otherwise it's jammed up in the reel. All right. Have a good day. Enjoy your Sunday and uh, happy new year. Bye bye.